Hey guys, how's it going? Today we are planting up two sets of containers, both for full sun. We're gonna be working with a lot of beautiful color. No super tunias though, which is so crazy for me because you guys know, especially when I'm working with these containers, I'm not sure that I've ever planted these up without using super tunias of some kind. But I thought it would be fun to show some other plants in here. Some of these annuals are brand new out this year. Some of them have been around. Uh, these containers here, so there are 10 of them now. We used to have 14. In fact, let me just show you what's going on in this area because it looks a little different maybe than the last time you saw it. Uh, we moved the four containers that spanned the distance here to the end out into the south garden and they just started scraping the gravel back yesterday and there's a great big giant hole toward the back there where we're going to have a big tree installed tomorrow so we'll be sure to bring you guys along for that as well uh, this whole area is going to become garden so flower beds um, and such so anyway that's why we only have the 10 containers now along this fence line instead of 14. they are approximately i want to say 26 or 27 inch diameter i'm not positive on that these are from Unique Stone. We shared about these when we had them installed. Um, they're on drip that runs um, kind of from, you can see it right here. The drip runs this way. I used an angle grinder to grind out a spot in this brick so that it wouldn't be pinched and it goes right up through the drain hole in the pot. And then you can see the drip line right in here. So that's how they're watered. They already clearly have a centerpiece in here. I had boxwoods behind the greenhouse that we had installed this past year that needed to be relocated. And I thought, well, I've got 14 boxwoods and 14 containers. I may as well try to relocate them into pots, use them that way. And I've really enjoyed it. I really like the structure that they bring, especially in the winter time. We'll see how they do. I have one of them that looks a little, a little sketch. I don't know if it's gonna make it through the season, but we'll see. Uh, but I was just really happy to get kind of a second life out of them and then hopefully a third life. Once I'm done with using them in containers, we can use them out in the landscape. In these containers, we are gonna be using one, two, three, four different varieties of plants, three of which are brand new this year, 2022, and then one of which has been around for a long time. So this is a Sweet Caroline Sweetheart Lime, sweet potato vine. So this will provide a really cooling, the lime green ones are just so cool in their color temperature and they just add a really beautiful kind of weighty foliage accent to any container. This one right here is a James Britannia, which, uh, so it's a South African phlox, gorgeous plant, and they have been working on this plant for not just years, but decades to get a, a James Britannia that had a really good growth habit, really good bloom, kind of like bloom production. Uh, and so I tried these out last year. There's Safari Sky, which has this kind of lavender blue, a white and orange throat there in the center so they have this glow quality and then there's also safari dawn which looks like the colors of sunset they're absolutely beautiful and they performed really well for me last year and they aren't fussy they don't need to be deadheaded you don't need to feed them like a whole bunch like some other annuals so i think that's going to be a really good one right here they do prefer full sun so they'll like it here this one right here doesn't have a bloom on it this one does i'm using two of these in each container this is a super bean I called Imperial Blue. Look at that saturated purple. Yeah, in the gardening realm, they call a lot of flowers that look purple to me blue. It's just kind of a thing. There are flowers that are more true blue, not as many as there are purple, but anyway, that looks kind of like a saturated purple to me. Gorgeous. Superbenas do really well, both in containers and in the landscape. We've tried lots of different colors out in the past, and so I'm excited to have this one in this container. And the last one we're gonna be using in here is the Violet Night Lobularia. You might be familiar with um, White Night or Blushing Princess or Snow Princess, these plants get huge like huge they perform all season long they go through almost a hard frost in the fall like i have lobularia still looking pretty some years through thanksgiving which is amazing that's why i actually placed it on this side of the pot because this is the driveway like the way you enter our property is right here so you'll really get to see this one shine from this side of the container they like full sun they're super fragrant they're just an amazing plant and i'm so excited that we have this color right here so Five plants total. There's already soil in these containers um, that I put in here when we did the boxwoods. So I'm just gonna toss a little Biotone starter fertilizer in these containers. We'll plant them up. They're all gonna look the same. And then we'll move to our second area to do our second containers, which I have some gorgeous stuff for those two. So excited. <laughs>
right guys, all planted. I wanna run over some of the stats of these plants because I forgot to do that <laughs> prior to planting. And I wanted to show you a couple of these boxwoods, this one in particular, that's not looking quite as good as the rest. You'll notice that some of them have a little bit more of that bronze tint to them still than others, uh, which the winter gems, they do take on that bronze cast in the winter time. It's kind of like a winter gloom <laughs> to me. And then usually in the spring, they bounce back with their bright green. Um, and we've got a lot of winter gems around our garden. A lot of sprinters, we've got a lot of green mountains. Honestly, the green mountains stay the greenest um, in my experience up to this point. But let's take a closer look at this one right here because I just don't know. I don't know if this one's gonna make it. I mean, the whole shrub has got all the flexibility. Um, there's green on the interior, but you can see that this one did struggle with spider mites. I don't see any spider mites on them now, but you can see that very typical spider mite damage that uh, many of these sustained last season. Uh, before we moved them, but I want to give them a minute. I'm going to be keeping a really close eye on them for spider mites. Um, also, you know, the addition of the biotone will be helpful and then just giving them some time. You know, sometimes when you move something, it takes a little while, they might shock a bit and they just need a season to recuperate. And I would really love to not, to not have to replace this, especially because to match sizes here would be really difficult. So we'll just see how, how it does. So you can see here we have the Violet Night right here kind of tucked in this side the imperial blue so this one will go like all the way down to the ground and you can trim them you know if you want to to kind of keep a tidier look the super bean i don't know that it'll go all the way down to the ground but i'm expecting it to be about yay um drapey <laughs> and then the sweet potato vine the sweetheart lime doesn't drape as much as some of the other ones do which i really really appreciate about it so it'll come over the side and probably be right in here we may have to do a little bit of trimming the James Britannia here is the smallest of all the plants that we use today. It's definitely, I would kind of term it maybe more of an accent plant. If you're wanting something to overflow and really go over the sides and take off, this probably isn't the choice. But I thought it would look really pretty just kind of accenting, kind of bringing that glow color, that glow quality to this whole mix. And the rest of the plants can do our drape for us. This one looks a heck of a lot better right here. Like look at the difference in the boxwood. Color, shape, the whole thing. So hopefully this is what we get after maybe a season or two. Okay, so we will be watering these in today after we're all done. It's always a good idea, even if you have your container set up on a drip system, to water the whole soil surface. That way it'll settle all the soil because we just roughed it up quite a lot. And if there's any low spots or any of the root balls that are still showing, we can add a little bit more soil if we need to. After that, it's drip system. Uh, because we don't have any super tunias or super bells in this arrangement, we will not have to spray these with BT this year for the budworm, which will be amazing. Uh, that will be a nice part about it, but we will be fertilizing on a weekly basis still. Okay, we're gonna head to the opposite side of the property for the next set of containers. Over here on the west side, this is where the brick walkway that kind of follows this formal area ends and meets our driveway. We thought it would be nice to put a couple of containers just to kind of indicate the opening here. I think they're really pretty. This is the lemon pot from Unique Stone. It's roughly 19 or 20 inch diameter. I can't remember without a tape measure out here. I think that's pretty close. We've got some soil sitting here. This one's completely empty. This one, you might remember, I recently attempted to plant a boxwood that I dug up in another part of our garden in here and it was way too big so I had put some soil in here for that project so I've already got a little bit in there we'll have to top it up just a little bit I'm going to run drip to these today because they don't have any drip run to them because they're brand new here so I've got let me just run through my supplies here I've got quarter inch supply line right here this does not have any emitter holes and what I will do there is brown drip tubing through this whole area. I'll find a section of that drip tubing as close to this pot as possible. And we'll tap in with a coupler with this uh, supply line. We'll come up through the bottom of the drain hole of this pot. And then I will use another coupler and come off of the supply line with this brown drip tubing that has emitter holes every six inches. And we'll just make sure that it kind of goes around the pot, like maybe this far I'll cut about right here. So I've got to do that first before I fill them up anymore with soil. And then these are the plants I'm going to be using. I think these are going to be so pretty. So we've got a Prince Tut, Graceful Grasses Prince Tut, which will be a really nice, I think, tall accent in these pots. Then we've got this geranium. So this is boldly hot pink. 
geranium. And I think this is a new one uh, this year. I think they're super striking. And then we're gonna use Cake Pops Purple Verbena, which I think this one might be new this year too. I've had a chance to grow this one though, and beautiful. I absolutely love these. It's kind of an accent. They don't get overwhelming in a container, which is really nice because I'm gonna pack quite a few plants in this container today. And then I might use this, I might not, but this is a Sweet Caroline Raven Sweet Potato Vine. I thought that all these colors looked real pretty together. So we'll kind of see how it comes together, but let's get the drip run, fill them with soil, a little bit of biotone, then we'll plant. Well, these turned out so pretty. They're very vibrant, which Aaron is loving. He loves the bright pops of color, but I think it's a really pretty uh, mix of color, honestly. This really beautiful lavender with the bright pink. The dark color potato vine is the only one I think we may have to do a little bit of trimming on if it gets so long that it wants to lay on the ground. I typically like to keep them trimmed up from that a little bit. And then we'll have to deadhead the geraniums. Probably once a week, it's easy just to come along and pop off the dead blooms, and that will help it, you know, encourage it to bloom more. But these have a ton of bloom stalks on them already. I think it's gonna be a really fun container to watch fill in because I think vigor wise they're all about in the same category I don't think any one of these are gonna take over another um, which is nice to know you know sometimes we do experiments where we try to put plants together that I'm not really sure how they're gonna compete and sometimes it works and, and sometimes it doesn't but I think that these are really gonna work together they're gonna get lots of Sun here which all of these plants prefer um, like I said with these two we'll be watering these in today make sure the soil settled and then I do have the drip system in here so we ended up because Aaron was mentioning to me that um, this zone does run for quite a long time. So I've got just six emitter holes in each container and I will be keeping an eye on that. If we need to adjust it down, I can always clip off one or two of the emitters and make this little run of drip a little bit shorter. It's something that's not once and done ever. You kind of just have to play with it until you find the sweet spot. All right guys, so that is it. I hope you enjoyed seeing these arrangements come together. I think the next ones we're gonna tackle are the great big urns in the back. I think that's gonna be a really fun project. And I'm really looking forward to seeing how all of these plants do, and we will give you updates throughout the season. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we will see you in the next video. Bye.